Across Africa, far more boys than girls go to school. It's mostly poverty that prevents parents sending their daughters to school. Given a choice between educating sons or daughters, they inevitably end up favouring the boys. Though the stories may be different, the results are depressingly similar. When there's not enough money to educate all the children in a family, girls miss out. This is tobacco country in Zimbabwe, about 50 kilometres from the capital Harare. 60 families work here on X Farm. Most of the girls growing up here will follow their mother's example and become seasonal labourers. But their dreams are very different. When I finish school, I would like to train to be a dressmaker. If I can get to school, I want to take computer studies. My biggest dream is to get through secondary school, right up to the sixth form. After that, I want to train to be a pilot. I want to have a lot of money. And I want to get a job. But these farm girls will be lucky to realize their ambitions. There's no secondary school on the farm and just one primary school. It was built by the owner of the farm, Michael Henderson. Despite all his efforts, many of the girls don't finish primary school. Some never have the chance to go at all. Right from the very beginning, the Africans have understood that education is, is vital to their careers and everything. But if there's a choice between educating a boy and a girl, if they haven't the money to do both, then the boy gets the, the benefit of the doubt. It's probably an inherited um, uh, tradition that the boys get the better in life. Twelve-year-old Lucia goes to X Farm Primary School. She's one of just 90 girls at the school, out of a total of over 200 pupils. Lucia's also the only child in her family to have the chance of an education. She's one of three sisters in a family of AIDS orphans. Her older sister, Barita, is 14 and had to leave school after her parents died. Now she helps run the household and look after her smaller siblings. Seeing Lucia going to school is very painful to me. I wish I could go as well. What I like about school is that it could give me a better future. Without education, you don't get anywhere nowadays. At 10, Portia is the youngest and has not yet been to school at all. It makes me sad to see Lucia going to school. I wish it were me instead. Without education, I can only work on the farm. I don't like working on the farm because you don't get to know what is happening elsewhere. It's so closed. I would rather work in the towns. Since her parents' death, all three girls have lived with their grandmother. She finds it increasingly hard to support even Lucia's education. What is so painful is that I can't earn enough money to send all my grandchildren to school. I really wish that all of them go to school. Education is not very important these days. No child should be staying at home and not going to school. 
I don't have a permanent job. All the jobs I get are during the agricultural season. What little money I do get is only enough to buy food. Under those circumstances, would you send a child to school instead of buying food? Even if Lucia does finish primary school, there's no secondary school on the farm. This is the nearest one. It's 24 kilometers away, in Norton. 17-year-old Miriam is the only girl from X Farm to have made it here, but the price she's had to pay since the age of 13 is to live alone all week in a bedsit. My parents likes me to go to school, so I have to stay four years. They are struggling for me to go to school, and I keep their promises <laughs> for me saying I must complete school. Miriam tries to go home to the farm at weekends to see her parents. Their wages as farm workers aren't enough to pay her school fees, so they sell fruit to make the extra money they need. My biggest dream is for Miriam to finish her education, get a job and do well in life. I want her to do better than me. I don't want her to have the kind of life I had. On Sunday nights, Miriam makes the long, hard journey back to town. It's not a journey she could do on a daily basis. But without being able to afford a room near school, Miriam would be stuck on the farm like other girls her age. It's only thanks to her parents' persistence that she's being educated at all. It's exciting for me that Miriam is doing so well in her studies. That's the way it should be. With their kind of dedication, I see light at the end of the tunnel. I want to have a supermarket so that I, I can get a lot of money and then I'll find a nice place for my parents so that they will leave the farm and live in a nice place. But with no extra income to improve her chances in life, Barita remains dependent upon her grandmother. Her only hope is to pick up what little schooling she can from little sister Lucia. I really like going to school so I can have a better life in the future. If I don't go to school, I'll end up working in the tobacco fields on this farm. The work makes you old too early. Today, our country only needs educated people. It's a common dilemma throughout Africa. In most rural areas, there just aren't enough schools in walking distance. And with no state money for transport, it's hard for children to get the education they need and crave. In Uganda, there's yet another handicap. AIDS here, as in Zimbabwe, has reached epidemic proportions. It adds to the problems of families already struggling to educate their children. Eight out of every 10 children in Uganda have lost one or both of their parents. Because of this, girls often face a further difficulty getting to school. Their families want to marry them off early to get the income from their dowry. It's common practice, especially with poor families devastated by AIDS. Once a girl is married, she doesn't go to school anymore. Anyango attends school, but she hasn't always. Her father died, leaving Anyango's mother and the rest of the family destitute. What happened was that the children lost their father. He left us with nothing. The children had no clothes, we had no bed clothes, and I had no means of supporting them. I didn't have any way of paying their tuition fees. So I thought her marriage might improve things. Hopefully, she could help her brothers and sisters. The dowry of a girl like Anyango can be worth as much as 10 to 15 cows, more than the average income in the region for a whole year. It proved too strong an incentive for Anyango's mother. My situation was difficult. 
The man I married didn't take care of me. I couldn't afford neither soap nor clothes. Life was much simpler at home. Mother could borrow things from our neighbors. We shared everything. Nobody lent me anything there. I didn't understand the language. There were too many strangers. I couldn't understand a word of their conversations. But Anyanga was lucky. She had a dedicated teacher, Tabu, who noticed she was absent from class. I came to the mother to ask where Anyango is. Eventually, the mother told me, ah, forget all about Anyango, because Anyango went for marriage. I started okay, complaining, why, why did you do that such a thing without even consulting me? Don't you know that education is, a, is the best? Said, ah, but the problems I'm facing here, you see, I'm just a widow. The husband passed away. I have nothing eh, to help the, the children. So at least when this one goes, the husband will be sponsoring the home. All this, all, in all activities, as the husband of the home will be manning the other home and manning this home. It was the teacher, together with the local authorities, who brought me back from my husband's home. They took me there to the teacher's house. I lived there for about one month. While I lived there, I often talked with the teacher. He told me how important education was. The teacher got hold of some books for me. I went back to school. He said I had nothing to be ashamed of. At first I was afraid. The others would laugh at me. He told me nobody would. It wasn't easy to accept the teacher's offer to educate her. We were still unable to pay for the things she'd need at school. Luckily for Anyango and her mother, Tabu works with the COPE program. It's a community-based project providing flexible and affordable schooling for girls who've missed out on a formal education. The Ministry of Education provides books and materials. For its part, the community sees to the upkeep of the schoolhouse. The difference is that they take a pupil who has had failed eh, to attend any formal school due to problems, and these are problems. Orphans, those who are, are not attaining education because the, the parents are, don't know the value of education, marriage breakouts, poor parents like that. Eh? And these pupils, those are the pupils who had never gone to any formal school. Even they don't know how the class looks like. Those are the pupils that we enroll. If everything works out, I hope to become a nurse. Then I could still earn money. Even if I got married, I want to be a nurse. Health is one of our subjects. This education will help me achieve my goal. But while Anyango may now have a chance to realize her ambition, thousands of other young girls are left with no prospects at all. There's a law against child marriage in Uganda, but as in many African countries, it's widely flouted and most young women don't know about it. They also don't know that they have the right to education, enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights 50 years ago and reinforced by the Convention on the Rights of the Child. There's a law against child marriages. Young women are unaware of this. They are tricked into marriage. They should be provided an education. In Benin, West Africa, fewer than six out of ten girls go to school, compared with nearly all boys. Dobe is 13. She's just one of thousands of girls who will never attend school. Instead, for the last eight years, she's worked for her cousin, selling food to passers-by and local schoolchildren. She's one of an estimated 100,000 children known as Vidimagon. 
Vitamagon is a term used to describe children who've been sent away from home to live with other families, a common practice across Africa. Almost all Vitamagon are girls. Traditionally, girls in remote rural areas became Vidimagon so they could move to the cities to get an education. But over time, they've become just another source of cheap domestic labour. Today, the practice is one of the major reasons why girls in Benin are denied an education. <laughs> As head of her household, Ajavon is the equivalent of Dope's new father. She was small when she came, about five years old. She came here now eight years ago. Dope lives with us. Her cousin is my wife, so she lives with her cousin. She doesn't go to school because we can't afford it. They sell food, but her cousin also sends her to the day center to learn things. Here at home, she's learning how to treat and cook. When she goes somewhere, she'll be able to cook and sell food. She'll have a business. Even if she went to school, she would do this business because it's what her cousin does. Here I cook and wash dishes. But I prefer cooking to washing. I've never been to school. I would like to go to school, but now I think it's too late. I'd like to go and learn something. I'd like to learn to be a tailor. A few streets away, another girl, Benoit, is on her way to school. Benoit and her older brother were abandoned by their parents. They were taken in and given a home by Agnes and her husband. One morning we found Benoit and their brother in our home. We asked them, why are you here? And they said, our dad left us here and is gone for a day to Togo. When he comes back, he will take us home. But he never came back. So my husband and I kept the children. It was difficult for us to send them to school, as the father never came and helped. My husband is out of work. I cook and sell rice porridge. So with the money I make, we try and keep the children. But the money goes quickly because there are too many children. Agnes's determination to educate Benoit is based on her own experiences as a Vidimagon. I think girls should go to school to get education, to get knowledge. I never went to school, although I wanted to. I was Vidimagon myself. When my parents placed me with the new family, it was with the condition that I went to school, but I never did. I want to explain what it was like when I was with Megan. I was with my aunt. She treated me well, but her husband was not good to me. He didn't want me there. He gave me jobs I couldn't do. Make me work all hours and blamed me for things that I didn't do. It's good to be Vido Magan if you are placed with a well-educated and good person who will send you to school and teach you things you wouldn't learn in your village. If you get a good education, you will change. You won't be the same person you were when you left your village. I like going to school to get education. Children who don't go to school suffer. When I grow up, I'll send my children to school. No, younger sisters don't go to school. It's not good because if you go to school, tomorrow you'll become something. 
Je pense que c'est que les parents font ne sont pas bons. I think it's the parents' fault. Instead of sending them to school, they send them to the market to sell things. Dope is still at work at her market store. However, there is hope on the horizon. There's a new initiative, a community centre which organises a weekly afternoon session for Vidamagon who never had a chance to go to school. As well as learning to read and write, the children are taught practical skills to help increase their self-confidence. They're also given lessons in basic hygiene. It's a rare opportunity for little girls like Dope to escape the drudgery of their daily lives. center I learned to do housework. Before they had to tell me what to do when I was at home but since I've been coming here I've learned how to do it on my own. I hope other Vidomegon will come here to learn things. At the center Dope dreams of becoming a tailor. It's the highlight of the week for these Vidomegon children but it's not enough. Because the economy and social conditions are difficult today, it's hard to take care of one's own children, let alone Vido Magan. If you don't have faith in God, you'll never manage it. It's not good to have your children placed with other people. Because today things are so difficult, I'm not sure they'll be properly cared for.